So, in this video, we are going to learn about Git. So, what is Git and why you should use it? So, from what we can see here, Git is installed and maintained on our local machine. Then, why GitHub is designed as a Git repository hosting service. So, Git and GitHub, they complement each other. So, the purpose of Git and GitHub is to achieve one goal or, or to achieve the following goal to create versions of your, of your project and to and to save those versions in a cloud storage so that can easily be accessible then also for collaboration so those are the common purpose of using git and github but if you're using git only which is installed on your local machine you cannot use it to collaborate because it only lives in in your local machine but with github which is hosted online that means you can host your code and access them on, on, online so git is a software that you install on your system for creating versions or for tracking changes in your code why when you finish creating a version in order to save it so that in case you miss your system or or something happens to your system you can say i have access to this code so you save it online so github is like an online store then why git is is like it is like uh, the factor also so this is like the kitchen and why this is like the refrigerator so if you if you prepare a meal and you want it to last for many days you have to store it you have to find a way to store it so some other added benefit of storing your code on github is that it helps you to access your code anywhere even even if your your, your computer is damaged and also encourage collaboration so whatever when you use your git to prepare a version of your code then that version you can save you can store it online so that is just the little difference this is local and this is online so th this is like the kitchen it prepares your food so whatever food you prepare whatever meal you prepare whether it's, it's delicious or not the way you store it, that is where it will test when you bring it out from the refrigerator. So, but that said, you can push a code to GitHub by using Git, but you can also push a code directly by using GitHub. But one of the advantage of using Git is that you're able to track your changes so that is why I'm teaching you this if you use the drag and drop or using the fire explorer that github gives you to push your code then uh, there's no way for you to track changes using your using your local machine so it is the git in your system that actually does does most of the tracking why that of your why that of the github is like the refrigerator that just stores the code so the way you store it is easy to keep it for you so there are so many things that uh, you can use git and github to do but this is just the basic you write a code and because as a front-end web developer or as a developer you 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 may need to reference your code to speed up a future job 
so you store it on your github so that you don't you don't have to start afresh again so git and github they just complement yourself but just know that git is a high quality version control system that lives on your local machine why git is a cloud based hosting company so you can save your codes that you've created a version of using git on github so benefits so why should you use git so i've already explained that but you should use git such to create versions of your code you should also use github to so that you can easily access your code anywhere because it's online and also for collaboration then another reason why you need git is is like your online cv so if you're applying for a job you know you're looking for internship they'll probably ask you for your github username so by the time they see the quality of project you've done there then that will convince them that you actually have that number of experience that you say you have because it is very reasonable that the more you, the more time you spend as a web developer the more quality project you will do so if you say you have five years of experience they want to see an improvement of the project as you started until until the time of your interview so that being said you should try as much as possible to push quality project to your github then the next slide just explains everything in letters so git is a software that is installed on your local machine and git is a service git is installed locally on your system just as i've mentioned then git is hosted then github is hosted on the web git is a command line too then git provides graphical interface so you, you remember i said you can push a code to your github without using git so it just provides a ui for you where you just drag and drop or or, or just a lesson files but there's one advantage of using git when you are using the github to to upload a file you you only upload files from the last time I tried, you can only upload files and it's very very slow you can upload a folder from the last time I tried but when you use git you can easily upload the folders you have on your local machine so it just makes it more easier and that's why I, 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 I like teaching it so it's only in some situation where you need to push a code and you're now with your system maybe perhaps you're with your phone and for some reason you have that code on your phone then you can use the graphic card interface of github to push okay it is a tool to manage different versions of edit made to files in the git repository so on the git on your local machine you have your project folder which is like your local repository then we want to put the versions of each code which i recommend maybe after a day of work for your, for for a particular project or after you achieve a milestone so let's say to complete a project you have like 10 milestones you need to achieve so as soon as you achieve one you push it as a branch you achieve the next one you push that one to a new branch so that in case something happened to your system or there's an error and you need to you you just remember that in your last branch there is no error so you can easily clone the branch and continue instead of starting all over so the repo you have on your local machine which is like your local your previous folder that is what you push to the online repository so it is a space to upload a copy of the git repository that is the one on your on your local machine the it provides functionalities like version control system and source code management 
provides functionality of source control as well as adding features of its own. So with with GitHub you can collaborate, you can more than one developer can work on a project thereby speeding is the speed of development. So so this is what Git is and why you should use it. Remember it's like your online C V it can it, it can help you to track versions of your code, access your code, even if you're not with your system or your system crashes beyond repair. And I think that is all. So let's move to the next one, which is how to push your code to GitHub using Git command line. So the first thing I want to do is to create a repo on GitHub. So I believe by now you must have created a GitHub account. Then you can also get your personal access token ready too. Because if you want to use your password when GitHub asks for it, it will throw a message that the use of password has been discontinued since 2015 also, so it's your personal access token that it respects. So let's so I'll log in to to my GitHub, create a repo, and I will and I will show you how to do it using these steps. So let's continue so i'll i'll come to my my repository so by the time you open so if i click on this excuse me so this is my dashboard and this is probably what you see when you open your 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 this github account but i want you to go to your repositories so the easiest way is to click on this icons here so you choose your repository then you click on new so we want to create a new repository which is like a, a folder So I'm going to put git push yt2 So this is just in this is just the name of the folder but it, the name here does not mean anything. So I'm going to choose it as a public one so that everyone can see now this is my github username so if you know my username you can search for me on github and have access to this file if you need it so that is just what i will do so i'll create i'll click on create a repository so now i have this so the next thing that we need to do now is to have our personal access token remember that was part of the instruction so have your personal access token ready so let's do that so i'll scroll up we'll see come back to this page tap on this last icon here then i'll go to the settings then i'll scroll down to this left sidebar look for developer settings so these are the steps you get your personal access token. Then next, I'll click on the personal access tokens. Then I'll click on this tokens classic. Then you see that I have so many tokens here. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a new one. Then 
later on I can delete these ones so that the, so I don't have so many tokens here. Mm -hmm. So I'll click here. So in case you miss a token, maybe you forgotten where you pasted the token that will generate, you can come back and generate a new one and delete the old one. So we click on this generate new token. So it will ask me to confirm my access. So I'm going to use I have the GitHub mobile app. So it is asking me if I want to use the mobile app or I want to use the password. So I'm going to use the mobile app. So I'm going to confirm that number, but in your own it's probably going to ask you to use to use your password. So I've seen the request, so I'll tap on it and I'll type those two numbers, 82, and it will automatically detect the verification and it will log me in. So that's what I've done. So the next thing I'll just type any note here just to give this give this token a name. So git push two two or two a so the name you give you does not matter so you want so you please you want to choose an expiring date but to choose the one that does not have an expiring date is not good that means that your personal access token is valid for life and if somebody have access to it the person will be also be using it for life so you always choose I always choose like leaving it at at uh, these 30 days or if you like these seven days but it's not good for you to leave it for life like no expiring date so i'm going to click everything because i'm the one that is using this so i'll just check everything but you cannot check some but you have to read the the description here so that any functionality that you 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 did not check here you can't do that from your from your command line so I'll, for this our case i'll just check everything so everything is checked so i'll click on generate the token So the token has been generated. So what I'm going to do now is to copy this. Remember the advice from this. So make sure to copy your personal address token now. You won't be able to see it again. So I'll look for somewhere on my PC. So I'll look for, I want to easily access this file. So I'll just look for somewhere close to this folder. So I'll go a step backward. Then here I'm going to create a new folder called Path. Now remember, I'm not saving it inside the project folder. Not a folder. Sorry, cancel that. Is a file. Path. Dot txt. So I'm going to save that here. So I'll save my personal access token. Control S to save. So each time I want to get my personal access token, I'll come to this part. So I've saved it somewhere on my PC. So we are good to go. So I can leave this place. So the next thing I want to do. is to leave here for now and go back to to my repositories then this is the recent one created so I'm going to I'm going to do that 
then this is the project that we are working on this one here so I'm, I would like to push this to github so that is the one that, that we are going to use so I remember we have this project already open on, on, on my terminal so you can you can decide to use VS Code terminal but I just like to use my own terminal so they still do the same job so the first step according to what we, we have seen here is to type git init then git status git add just to automatically add all the on track files then to add your username then this part of so this part of the code we are not going to type it when we are typing this to because it's going to it's going to cause an error because there's a new object now it doesn't want to see any personal access token in in your commits so that will throw an error so let me edit this but just know that after we finish typing adding these two and git of course will ask us to to login so in place of our so the first prompt or the first input form will be our email or our username but in place of our, our password from the prompt that will show will be our personal access token so anytime we see password we replace it with our, with our personal access token so i'll just leave this here but will not implement it when we are adding this to so i will not have an error so let's begin so the first one is git init so that has in initiated a git expository then git start use so we notice that all these files are not tracked so we need to add them to be tracked so the next thing I want to show you is you can skip a file or folder that you don't want to accidentally push to git so let me show you that so let me go back to my vs code i'll create a new file sorry i'll, I'll re remember i'm going to tap here i'll create a new file called dot env so it's an, it's an environmental variable used to store some secrets some username and password that you don't want other users to see even if they get your code so even if they get your code from github so but in this our case we have not reached that part so but i'm just going to teach you how to ignore a file or folder <coughs> maybe because it contains some secrets that I don't want the public to see or is too big so we have so I'm going to ignore this by so I'm going to put some some dummy password here so just put so I'll just put db password I just put equal to something like that then db username or something like that now i'm going to put something here so username it can be doggy then the password can be brave dog so if i don't want the users to see this file but i can actually use this file within here so what i'll do i'll save this one now for me to effect that i need to create another file called git ignore so dot g 
kit git ignore so once I do that I will not tell it that I don't want my dot env file to be among the ones I want to push so to see this change I need to go to my terminal again so I think I need to make this full screen then I'm going to type git status so you notice now I'm seeing my git ignore but I'm not seeing my dot env file because I instructed it not to include it but if I come back to to my code and, and remove this and save come back to my terminal again and put my git status you notice I see my dot env file now because it's not being ignored yeah there is no command to ignore it so if I save that I can do my control Z and save and do my git status you notice <laughs> the file will be ignored so git status you notice that being ignored so that's just what I, what, what I wanted to show you so the next thing is to add those which is according to our command is git space add space dot so that is to automatically add all the files that have been modified or untracked so I'll say git add space dot then the next thing to do is to commit this so if I do my git status you are going to notice the change now then I'm going to do my git commit minus m then I just put v1 that is version 1 or you can use your first commit now for some of you actually if it's the first time you're pushing to git by the time you hit enter it's not going to show you this output but rather it's going to ask you to tell me who you are by showing you that you should type these two commands so let me do that with you so git config space minus minus global space username so you put your email then the next one you put your username so let's do that together so git config minus minus global user dot name user dot email then in quotes my one is amadi chile o o seven at gmail dot com so I'll close the quote. So just to confirm that the command is correct, git config management global space user. So it's correct. So I'm going to hit enter. It's not a, not a terminal. So I'm going to hit enter. So to bring out this, to bring out this command that I've typed before because it's you will notice it's very very long. So I just tap my arrow up key so I'll bring it up again so the next thing I need to ch add is is the name that is the username so I'm going to clean this email and you type your git username here so for me it's chile mati so I'll hit enter so by the time you do this if you had an error here which you you should have if it's your first time of using git then you go back and repeat this command again 
git commit minus m then version one so if you hit that to tell that there's nothing to commit because it has already committed that but for you it's going to show you this now so now we are good to go so remember we didn't add this here because that is a, that is not acceptable then the next thing is we need to tell it the remote repository on our github or yes on our github here we need to push this code to so if we are part of a team it will not be our own repository to be a, a repository from the invited from the invited company that you join it will show you on your github still so i will so i'll go to my to my github page then i'll tap this so it has copied then i will go back to the terminal and re remember the command that we're, that we're going to type to add this is git remote add origin then you paste this repo.git link that we just copied now so git remote add origin then in your terminal you don't do ctrl c because it will end any process so you just right click and paste so i'll hit enter so it has done that so the next thing that we need to do now is to is to is to check the branch that we are so so i'm going to put that so git branch so we are on branch master so i'm going to add the next command which is git push origin branch name so git push origin now the branch name is that master here that is showing in green so i'm going to type master so i hit enter then now you see it's asking me for my username so i'm going to type chile mati that is my username then it's asking me for my password to my github account now i'm now i'm not going to type my github password but rather i'm going to copy this personal access token that is here ctrl c then i'm going to i'm going to i'm going to paste that so paste and i'm going to hit enter so you see that has worked so by the time i go back to my github repo and refresh this has worked very nice so there is no error so the next one i need to teach you now is this so the next time i want to push is so let's say i've 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 made a change to this kit I mean to this my project and i want to push it as it of course i always recommend if you make a significant change and you need to push it just create a new branch and push it down new branch so that in case you need to fall back or maybe your current branch has a mistake you can so you can easily go back to that so so let's try this now so i'm going to add a change and try to commit this I try to push this to a new branch which I will call version 2 or which I will call v2 so I'll go back to my VS code so I'll just just a simple change so excuse me so I'll call I'll just add a comment and I'll put a um, next section completed something like that so if i save this 
now this line of code that i added there is a change and that's why it is it, it, showing m here so if i go back so let's say I, this is a, sig a significant job that i've done and i need to save that so if i go back to my terminal i'm going to say git status then notice it showed me that there is a, a modification on my about page so i want to push this to a new branch so what i'll do is git add space dot then git commit minus m so i'll call it v2 then we don't need to tell it the repository where we need to push it to because this is not the first time we are pushing from this project folder so it already knows that and that is why the next step is simpler so the next thing i'll create a new branch i'll switch to the new branch then i'll push to the new branch so let's do that so git branch is to check the branch that you are but when you add any letter after after this branch is to create a new branch so git branch v2 so that's the name of my branch v2 that's going to create a branch called v2 so git branch show me that i have two branches now master and v2 so to switch to the v2 branch is git check out v2 so it uh, it has switched to v2 and to confirm that when i do my git branch again notice that this green color will move from this master to v2 so let's check that git branch so that means currently now we are not in our v2 branch so to push this so the last command now is to push this so git push origin v2 because that is our branch name now so i'll hit enter so it's going to ask me for my username again so chile mati then my password remember this should be your personal access token so i'll just copy that come here right click and paste and i'll hit enter so you notice that has worked so if i go to my vs code it has already uh, it has already shown that i have a new push now for me to see the branch here i have to refresh then if i tap here i'm going to see that i have the v2 branch so if i click on the v2 branch i will still see everything but you notice that it's only on this my views that i have v2 the rest are view one because it's inside the about page that is inside my views for that that I, I made a change so that is what we are seeing there so the next thing i would like to show you is this how to clone a project with git so let's say you, you remember i told you that you can use your github to be part of a team to clone a project i mean to collaborate on a job so let's say you are part of a team and the job of the first developer is to do the markup then why you as 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 the second developer is to do the css the why another developer is to do maybe the javascript part so the first developer has finished his own job it's not time for you to to do your own job so what is going to happen is you might receive a, not a, a notification for now that the the most current branch is this v2 so that you should start working with this v2 because it's the most current branch then 
in after this class i'm going to show you or i mean after this part of the video i'm going to show you how to merge these two branch because when you type your git clone command if you don't specify the branch you want to clone it will automatically clone the master or the default branch so but this method I'm, I'm i'm showing you is you can choose any of the branch here in case the master branch is not the most updated so uh, and in our case the master branch is not the most updated it is this v2 unless we merge this one and this one before the master branch will be equivalent to this so let's do that so i'll go to I'll go to this my terminal so I want to open another folder so I want to easily access this my folder so I'll just click open containing folder I'll go outside now I want to clone I want to open my terminal here so that I can clone the exact project so I'll open a new terminal here then what I'm going to do what I need so the command that I need here is git clone minus b then the branch that I want to to clone I'll type it here then my repository link so, so we need that link and the folder name to save this so if you don't choose you don't add a folder name it will just it will just give it the default branch or a default folder name but i like adding this more especially so that it's not have nested folders so i'm going to go to the my github page now when you're turning in your assignment is this link i want you to copy after you've made a push or this one here any of them will work so that is what i need so i'll go to my terminal and i'll type git clone minus b then my branch name is in quote v2 then space i'll paste a git repo link then space I'll paste uh, just a branch uh, name v2 so whatever folder name you, you put that is what it will clone it to so I'll hit enter so I see it showing clone to v2 that has worked so if I go back here i'm going to see v2 and by the time i open v2 you see exactly what we have on this our page that is what we have here so now the next thing i want to show you is how to merge how to merge branches with git now to merge a branch with git you need to have a master branch and in our case we already have a master branch or a default branch then we need to create a new branch and make sure there is no error so there's no error in our case then commit the changes or push so remember in this version 2 earlier i've already made a change which is this v2 here and pushed so now i can make to the master branch then the next thing i will i will now switch to the master branch and switching to this master branch i have to do that from i have to do that from my i have to do that from my version 2 which is this one here so i'm going to switch to the to the master branch and i will initiate 
this merge process so then after that I will I can push to the master branch so let's effect this process so I'll, I'll come back to this terminal which is my v2 terminal so this one here then I'll switch back to the master branch so git checkout master so git branch so I switch to the master branch so the next command is to type my git merge the branch name which is the one I want to merge with the master branch which is my v2 then minus n then then a commit message so let's do that so I'm going to type git merge So what is the next one? The branch name which I want to merge from which is in quote V2 space then a commit message no minus M then a commit message minus M then a commit message added V2 to master So that is how we merge. So if I hit enter, it's going to show me already up to date. So that is not the expected results. And that is not the expected result because I've already made a push to this. So I'm going to repeat the process again. So I'll switch to So I'll switch to <coughs> I'll switch back to the V2 branch to so git checkout minus checkout V2. So I'm going to make another change again. So I'll scroll down. I'll just add a comment here. section 4 something like that and I'll save so notice this is a new this is a new change so if I go back to the terminal if I do my git status I'm going to see that there's a mod there's a change there then git add space dot I'm going to add that git commit minus m this commit minus m then the new the new version or the commit message is going to be version 3 so I'm going to hit enter then at this point I can push to to my new branch so let's see git branch so I'm in V2 so I can push this online so if I do that so git push origin V2 so it's going to ask me for my username so I'm going to type that Then for my password, I'm 
going to copy this and paste so that has worked so i'm thinking why it shows me he he showed me everything after this was because remember from that v2 i i added the commit before i switched to a new branch so now you in the master branch i added many stuff there so i've already i've already done the commit before i pushed before i switched to the v2 branch so i think that's why it's showing me that but if it shows me an error i'll just keep that and i'll make a short video on that later so where's my Oh, I think I've made another mistake. I, I I still push to V2 instead of V3. I, I still push to my, my V2 instead of V3. So git push. So git. Okay, so let's just so let's just try the master branch again. So I didn't Okay, so let's switch back. Git branch git checkout. Checkout V2 already in v2 so git check out master then let's bring back this our git merge command again so git merge v2 m then added v2 so let's hit enter so you see now it has worked So if if I do what is that in git log uh, you notice in my in my master branch and I have and I have the version three which is there and I, and I have my version 2 and I also have my v1 that means if I push this now to git that means in my so I want to show you the change online before you, before we switch now if I go to my master branch now you see that in this my v2 the latest update is showing me v3 but if I go to my master branch notice that the latest update is showing me just v1 so but what we've done in our command line is to locally merge branch v2 to our to our master branch so if I push now to the master branch I'm going to see exactly what i'm seeing in my in my v2 branch here i'll say that in this case now this views here will change to v3 instead of remaining v1 so let's do that so i'm going to add git push origin master So I'll type my username again. Then my password. And 
I'll hit enter so you see that has worked so if I come back to this my master branch and refresh you notice I'm going to see you notice now I'm going to see the the V3 so that has worked so in this so if you are working in a team so after you've made your push the is either you it might not be you another developer will verify that your code is actually working then he or she will merge it to the master branch so that the master branch will have a copy of the code that is actually that is actually working but and then and then according to the process that you or, or according to the progress you people have made so you at all times there is need for to avoid pushing and merging an error code to this master branch so that the there will be no need to start tackling an error because it's this code that is in the master branch that will be hosted online okay so we've done that so that was our merge two branches then the next one is how to pull from a branch now git pull of this the local branch with any updates from the remote repository on github git pull origin main that is this one downloads any new commit from the main branch on origin and of this the local main branch with this new commits so remember we cloned a branch earlier here that is here and the, and the name of that branch was v2 and what bra what branch did we clone from so let's check i think that is the branch that is here no it's not that one it's this one so that was on branch so let's check the branch git branch okay not a git repository so i have to cd into cd into v2 git branch so it was on branch v2 so what i want to do now is so remember now this our v2 branch that is here does not have the version 3 that is this one so if i do my git log git log it's going to show me that i just have my v1 and v2 so in order for it to to update this v2 that is a manuka folder now to to have the latest update now which is this v3 so that i can start working so let's say in a team now you have from the last time you did a job or your task it was on v2 but you now receive an update that your next tax is on v3 and is available so what you need to do is to pull so that you get the latest update and start working where you need to work so uh, the command to do that is git pull origin then the branch name so so let's do that so git pull origin v2 so if I hit that, it should update. So it has done the update. So now, if I do my git log, so you notice it now has what v3. So it has updated. So it's like it has cloned. But the difference between this git put that it, as it's cloning it is not creating a new folder for you. But just updating the online 
expository with the one that uh, that you already have so it, so it's like copy and replace so it just replace any new any file that has been changed with the updated one that is online then so that is how we come to the end of this video so the next video i'm going to make is this